Welcome, citizens, to Liberty Tales from the Tower. As your media director, it is my privilege to inform you that the following stories may contain content some listeners will certainly find disturbing. We here at AB3 are excited to welcome you back to our late night broadcasts, continuing our long tradition of frightening Atrian tales. This season, we have another special production for you. A four-part story we have painstakingly pulled from our long-abandoned archives. But before we bring you tonight's tale, a quick message from our sponsors. Atreus remains focused on the future. The Department of Internal Affairs Division of Education and Prosecution has opened five new accelerated childhood education academies in Districts 3, 5, 7, 9, and 11. The children selected for the new accelerated programs will be chosen after their five-year exams, and the attendance of these new compulsory boarding academies will shape the minds, bodies, and wills of Atreus's finest young citizens. To learn more about the new accelerated childhood education academies, please visit the DEP's intranet site or speak with your local DEP office. Thank you, Aurelia. Now, a quick entertainment update. The Department of Public Affairs and our Division of Interactive Media reports that the newly launched broadcast, City of the Sky, has been cancelled. After the release of two episodes, every Atrian broadcast office was overwhelmed with protests to the satirical program. Many upset citizens believing the statements were being made in earnest. <laughs> The program has now been considered a failure, and all future episodes will be dismissed. The DPA has scheduled a public apology for tomorrow. <coughs> Are you feeling all right, Aurelia? <coughs> yes, thank you, Petrus. I apologize for the coughing. It should clear up by tomorrow. Oh, no worries. Why don't you step out of the studio? Get yourself something to drink. Now, if this is your first time tuning in to AB3's Tales from the Tower, prepare yourself for tales of an unsettling sort. This new four-part mini-series is a story by our own in-tower archivist, K.A. Stats. Some of you are too young to recall the events of the mining release lockdown over 15 years ago. But today we hear the story of a group of friends who settled in during the lockdown for a much-anticipated game of minds and mysteries. Day Zero <laughs> Does everyone have a drink? No, here, give me a refill. Quick. All right. I would like to thank you all for coming. We are going to have an amazing time, but still study. <laughs> yes, an amazing time, but still get those sessions reviewed. I am really glad we could all make it. It's been so difficult to get us all around a table, and this lockdown has given us a perfect opportunity. And we finally get to use your massive apartment. Yes, and that. But it looks like we are coming up on the time, so if everyone has their glass, join me in the... Oh, yes, here we go. Five, four, three, two, one! Lockdown! Yeah! All right! Well, I hope we avoid becoming agitated with each other because lockdown is now in effect and we have four days to make our way through the Minds and Mysteries. Which means we need to hear from Max about what to expect. Everyone, let's hear it for our game, Archon. Woo! Max, 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 Max. Well, we have a brand new module to run over the next four days, and I've checked in with all of you, but I know Hilaria and Blandis still have not downloaded the upgrade. I started, it'll be downloaded soon. Same. Perfect. So, while the streets outside are flooded with a predicted release of subterranean gases from the mining caves, we have the opportunity for four days of uninterrupted play. With some studying. <laughs> yes, with some studying. Now, this is my first time running a game in the newest update, but I watched a lot of tutorials over the last few days, and I have everything downloaded and prepared. 
We have a lot to be excited about regarding both the story module we will be running and the new tech updates. Reeve, this new setup is way better than the minds and mysteries I used to play as a kid, and I just want to say thank you for letting me run this. Thank you for running it. I know I do not want to learn all the GA rules, so yeah, thanks. Same, thanks. But what are the new updates? I haven't played since we tried to run that retro game six months ago. Yes. So, everyone brought their privacy hoods, and I already helped each of you install the new interface application. The privacy hood interface overlay will allow for each of you to experience the pre-recorded content and real-time augmentation content in-game as we reach those sections. Oh, uh, (laughs) Hilaria looks a little confused, so here is an example. You reach a shopkeeper. Hilaria, say your character. Oh, her name is Nona. Right. So, Nona goes in to talk to a shopkeeper in a location that is included in the module. If the shopkeeper has any pre-generated audio, the audio will play while the visage is projected in my privacy hood. It should look just like you are talking to them. If there is not any pre-generated audio, then the voice editor will take my voice and make it sound like the shopkeeper's, and the real-time holographic face overlay should keep up with me. It has hundreds of pre-generated voices and facial holograms for non-specific NPCs, and several dozen pre-recorded ones for the written-in NPCs. The holotable table is also updated. I did that last night. So the combat hologram should flow smoothly, and it is integrated with the lighting for ambiance. So we are in for some fun. I have had plenty of time to read through the module we are playing, and with all the time put into the module by the company, we have some amazing characters and situations ahead of us. Just make sure that if you have any final questions about character creation, you ask me tonight, because we are starting the game tomorrow morning. Until then, we drink. Raise your glasses to lockdown, to friends, and to minds and mysteries. Revenders. 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 Now eat, drink, be happy. Get plenty of sleep for the game tomorrow. And if you spill anything, I'll kill you. The throw rug is new. (laughs) (laughs) Day one. (sighs) Ah, oh, Max, you wake up early. Caffeine? Uh, yes, caffeine. No sweetener, thank you. I wanted to make sure I had everything ready for the game. Double-checking that all the updates are completed, all the character data is logged for seamless combat, those sorts of things. This new update has so much potential for amazing game sessions, but there is a lot of work on the back end. Do you need any help? I can double-check the holo table if that would help. I know it is a lot of work for us to prep our characters and our own gear, but there is a lot more work for you. No, I am pretty much done, but thanks. I actually enjoy the work. It is mostly creative stuff and planning, and controlled preparations. (laughs) You do like control. (laughs) Or I will fake it until I make it work, as long as the players cannot tell I made a mistake. Well, we never can, so I guess it is working. I smell caffeine! Over here. Freshly mixed and hot. You have a lot of energy in the morning. Is this going to be a consistent thing? I enjoy mornings. And I have a lot to be excited about. I was tweaking my character profile for the game last night, and I am ready to get started. How about we get some breakfast and let the others wake up first? Sounds agreeable. Caffeine, please. Sweet and hot. Oh, what kind of changes did you make to the character profile? Anything I should know? Just some changes to the character appearance. Nothing on the technical side. (sighs) Thank you. (sighs) Is Blanda still asleep? You all wake up so early. I think we are all a little excited. I know I was dreaming of delving the mines beneath the city. Hearing the clatter of the dice. Well, I was going to institute the digital dice. But if you brought your own, you can use them. I did not bring my own, so I will be using the dice roller. You're missing out on the tactile experience! The sound of an uncertain fate as the dice roll across the hollow table! 
There is a setting for that. The hollow dice can be accompanied by accurate audio to increase tension and engagement. Perfect. That will work. Not the same. It will never be the same. More caffeine, please. Sure. Should we wake Blandis? I can get him. He would definitely sleep through the entire lockdown if we let him. That tells me I should probably get set up. Bring over some savory snacks and fresh caffeine when you all head over. I would appreciate us not having to get up and down a lot once we start. Oh, I need to clean my teeth. No one deserves that. Sure, we can bring some over. We need some kind of schedule for breaks and stuff. Yes, and to set aside appropriate time to study. The game is fun, but the lockdown is only a pause from courses, not a freedom from them. Do not remind me. Did you wake Blandis? Yep, he's just making a quick call to his parents. He'll be out soon. (laughs) He really would slip through lockdown if he could. Speaking of, how is lockdown going? Full day of lockdown is underway, and we have some wonderful reports of what our talented and resourceful citizens are doing with their time. The Wells family of District 4 has dedicated the time in lockdown to creating their first family-composed song. Over the span of four days, they aim to write and record a new song, including input and instrumentation by their two talented children, Demedia, 12, and Rufina, 6. A perfect plan to educate young Atrian minds and enrich our city. If you have a lockdown living story to share, please submit it to your local AB station. Thank you for joining us for the lockdown update. Our updates occur on the hour. Please know that emergency updates will be broadcast at time of event in the case of an emergency. This is a scheduled lockdown to secure the safety of our citizens during a planned mining event. Please use this time wisely and remember, Reeve endures. Now for our- Other people in lockdown are composing music while I play games. Cece, you are a diligent student, but it's okay to take a break now and then. Really. I know. Thanks. Right. Now, what do we need to be done? Snacks? Drinks? And appealing hygiene. No one wants to be stuck around a table with someone who smells like fringe runoff. I say this because I personally have the worst breath this side of the wall in the mornings. I fixed it. But the advice really applies to everyone. Sounds reasonable to me. Everything looks right. Is anyone ready enough to help me test a few things? Sure. So go ahead and set up your privacy hood and give me a dice roll. Try the d20 to start. And... there. Perfect. Works well. The digital dice look great on the hollow table. It should. We just got that model a few months ago. (laughs) Looks so real. Now, Cece... On your character form, click to roll for, uh, maybe a computer use check and any type of attack you have prepared. Sure. Those turned out really well. Hmm, the computer use check is high. Did you get the data input wrong? No. Dr. Fall is highly skilled with computers. It is in my character background, and it is a primary skill. Yes. Right. There it is. Sorry. Well, looks like everything is working. So, yeah, I am prepped. So we can begin when everyone is ready. I am ready. Like someone said earlier, we have all been excited for this. Do you want to call Rufus before we start? No. We will talk a little later. I think the hospital has him working night shifts, so I generally just wait for him to call me. At least that way I mess with his schedule less. Just make sure you thank him for letting us all crash here during lockdown. I will. He was actually rather jealous of our dedicated Minds and Mysteries time. With studying. (laughs) With studying. Morning. Looks like I am behind schedule. Let me just grab some, uh, oh, snacks. Uh, Looks like we can begin. Caffeine, please. Hmm, thanks. Max, my friend, tell me what grand exploits we can expect in the days to come. Right. Well, yes. So, 
Today we are beginning a short, pre-generated module intended to introduce players to the new updates. Welcome, citizens, to the return of Dr. Moran. Dr. Moran? Wait, crazy Dr. Moran? From the battle for the crumbling wall? That campaign was insane. I'm excited. So, if each of you will briefly introduce your characters, Albina, as it is your apartment, please. I'll be playing Specialist Avia Woolroth. She is in the Agile Character Archetype. Avio grew up in District 3, and always wished that she could have joined the performers in the Atrian Aerial Ensemble, but she found that she could not easily conform with the structure required to reach her goal. She instead found work with the DRD's Advanced Technology Division, working as an expert in infiltration. She is a small woman, only about 150 centimeters tall, and is adept at fitting into piping and air ducts. She has never met a building she could not scale, nor a meal she could not eat. Thank you, Avio. And now we have Cece. Can you introduce us to your character? My character this time is Dr. R.J. Fall. Dr. Fall found their work in the DRD Advanced Technology Division after being caught forcing an AT security system to update. Just because Dr. Fall knew it could have been better. After a long conversation with the AT officers about personal responsibility, Dr. Fall was given a new post as a computer and cybersecurity advisor within the ADT. Dr. Fall is recognizable for wearing a bright blue privacy hood, even when asked to wear proper uniform colors. Oh, and they're the smart character archetype. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sounds like a perfect match. Okay, let's go with Blandis next. I am Special Investigator Linus Bauer. I may not be the fastest, strongest, or most clever member of the ATD's Internal Investigation Unit, but I know how to make people talk. I can catch them in a lie, and I am one of the more charismatic character archetypes possible. To a fault. A real fault. I have no points in anything agile, so I guess I am a klutz. Which definitely adds to eight, since I wrote up a whole detailed backstory a few nights ago and I promptly lost it all to the private suit update. So, <laughs> I'll be making up my backstory as we go along. Yes, that is me, Linus Bauer. See? I'm already making people laugh. Alright, thank you, Blandis. Uh, Linus. And last, we have Hilaria. Who have you built for us this time? I am Officer Nona. Just Nona. Nona has been assigned as the security detail to the assembled team. As a member of the Special Defense Force, Nona was selected for her dedication to the integrity of Atreus and the security of her city. She is the tough character archetype, with third tier lethality, proficiencies in hand to hand combat, and every standard issue firearm in circulation. Her last team always used to say, no one gets past Nona. And they were right. Until the day they went out on assignment without her and never returned. Now, she's more dedicated than ever to protecting her new team, her new assignment, and Atreus. Perfect. Thank you, Nona. So, with Avio, Linus, Dr. Fall, and Nona, you have a rather well-balanced team. I am, of course... Your game, Archon. Here to make this game as fun and as horrible as possible. In this adventure, you are members of a special team organized by the Department of Research and Development's Advanced Technologies Division to investigate the infiltration and loss of technological and computer programs due to exterior forces. As of this morning, you were assigned to the 3rd Atmospheric Research Team, and the news seems dire. To those on the inside, they know that exterior forces refers to fringers and traitors. And today, it appears as though it may be both. You have all been called in to an emergency meeting with Section Director Tori, who oversees all protection and security for the atmospheric research teams. All of you, except the new team security, Officer Nona, have worked with SD Tori before, and you know SD Tori to be a stern professional with little time to waste. Years of working on the tumultuous front lines in the defense of Atrian research has left her curt and uninviting. You all meet in the elevator, riding up to Tori's floor. That's cool. 
I'm happy to see you all again, though it is never under the best of circumstances. And you must be the new security? I'm Officer Nona. I am honored to be added to the team. What happened to your last security officer? Uh, what did happen was, you see, well, Bland is, no, um, Linus, he, he will tell you. <laughs> um, well, yeah, well, you see, he decided it was time for him to focus on family, so he retired to be a family man. <laughs> we absolutely did not let him die. <laughs> <laughs> yes, family man. Sure. As you make your small introductions, the elevator comes to a stop and opens up into the familiar hallway. At the end of the hall sits the perfectly clean glass hollow table of Tori's secretary, Illis. But Illis is missing from his post, the chair spinning ever so slightly. I want to roll for perception on the state of the room. Any hints to where he went? Uh, what about the door to Tori's office? Sweet! Maybe those digital dice are not so useless after all. A data sheet is askew on the desk, but it is locked. The seat is still warm, and the door to the right, which you know leads to Section Director Tori's office, is slightly open. These are our friends, our fellow citizens. We really just need to talk to the Section Director. She knows we're coming. So what do you do? Knock on the slightly ajar door. All right, sure. We will just have to hope this is not some kind of trap. A trap. In Atreus, never. <laughs> Linus knocks on the metal door, and it slowly pushes open. Inside, Section Director Tori and her secretary, Illis, are looking over a data pad with worried brows. Section Director Tori looks up, noticing Linus, and ushers him and the team into the office. Ah, oh, you have finally arrived. Quick, take a seat or stand. There is no time for formalities. We have a problem. Tori moves behind her hollow desk, and with a wave of her hand, a collection of documents and images rise above the surface, sending the room into a glow of blue light. Whoa, that was perfect! I know. The lighting interface is seamless. <clears throat> uh, right. So, Section Director Tori looks up at each of you as you enter. Her eyes look worried and tired, a sight you have seen before. We have had a critical breach. Physical? In the wall? Oh, I do not know if my overlay is working. I just see Max's face. Just allow the app to pass your pop-up blocker. SD Tori looks down at the desk and sends the case information to your privacy hoods with a flick of a finger. Time is short. Read while I talk. Last night, almost exactly five hours ago, some exterior force pried their way through the digital security tiers and copied the newest schematics and engineering documents for retrofitting the atmospheric regulators. After creating their copy, the data was scrubbed. Nothing was left. The backup, which had not been checked since the last backup cycle, had been deleted at an earlier date without notice. This overlay is great. Tori looks just how I would have envisioned her. The schematics and engineering documents are gone? Can the research still be brought back up? No. We have nothing left. <sighs> this is some kind of setup. Extortion, most likely. Though we have not heard from any party with demands, as of yet, odds are we will end up in a bidding war for our own data. With whom? A few Fringer groups have access to older atmospheric regulators beyond the wall. They would benefit vastly from being able to retrofit and update their resources. Those voice filters are amazing, Max. I know! This is great. Right, so... <clears throat> I am relieved to report that we have had a lead. There was a digital fingerprint we have seen before, from a previous data heist four years ago. Can I roll for knowledge, Atreus, or something to see if I know what major heists happened four years ago? Of course. Four years ago, you were too busy to mind these smaller stories from the department. You had your work ahead of you and did not focus on much else. <sighs> Sounds about right. Nona would have been on a different team back then, but she may have heard something. I will roll real dice. Yes! So, Hilaria, you just got a short paragraph. Feel free to share what you want from the data Nona just remembered. Sweet. Okay, so... it seems like... Wait. Here. Sorry. 
Four years ago, a large dossier of names was stolen. The list was filled with Atrian citizens working on the highest levels of military security programs. The data was recovered, but due to the worries regarding the loss of secrecy, many high-level scientists were reassigned or moved into early retirement. And do you know who did this, Section Director? The digital markers, the way this man built his code, allowed us to build a file over time. He was caught and imprisoned. It had not been his first data heist, so we had been hunting him for some time. So, he is already in custody. Who is he? Dr. Augustus Moran, formerly of the DRDAT and the DFR. He's in custody now, but someone is using all his old tricks. How difficult is it to copy someone's... I cannot think of how to say it, but style of hacking or whatever? Roll in for computer use. Very difficult. Very difficult. (laughs) Reeve. Where is he now? We should speak with him. Dr. Moran was moved to the basement cells of this facility, following the identification of his possible influence or involvement in this new problem. I've already set each of your marks for access clearance, and I and the division ask that you start down to speak with him immediately. Then we should go. Every moment we waste is a new chance for those schematics to reach Fringer hands. Agreed. Wait a moment. Uh, Section Director Tori, is there anything we should know before we go to speak with Dr. Moran? Dr. Moran is a very intelligent man. In the past, he was a great asset to Atreus. He would have been executed for treason if not for his apparent usefulness. Be careful. He knows just what to say and when to say it to get the outcome he sees as most advantageous to his plans. And do not let him near a tablet, privacy hood, or anything he can use. Just leave everything outside the cell blocks when you arrive. The officer on guard will ask you to do such when you are preparing to enter. As reassuring as ever, Section Director Tory. Always a pleasure. Reeve endures. Reeve Reeve endures. Reeve endures. So, what are you doing? Heading to the elevator, I guess. While waiting for the elevator to arrive, you hear the door to Section Director Tory's office slam shut. Her secretary is nowhere to be seen, and the silence of the tower fills the room with heavy, stagnant worry. The lights flicker. Whoa! Whoa. That sync is perfect. It really works. The lights flicker. And when the elevator arrives with its familiar ding, the doors open on an unfamiliarly dark interior. I may not be the perceptive character, but it was not like that when we came up, correct? Correct. How old is this tower? Based on some of the fixtures, you would think the tower had been updated within the last 20 to 25 years. The tower looks like it is due for some upgrades. I would not focus too much on the lights. The elevator would not be permitted to operate without proper regulation, so we need to focus on reaching Dr. Moran as soon as possible. By going in the dark elevator? See, that just does not seem like the smartest choice to me. It's very... uh... foreboding. Or is it exactly the right choice? If Dr. Moran knows we are coming, what if he can try it at the Turris? Now, I said it as a joke, but it might actually add to eight. With every moment wasted, the plans could reach Fringer hands. (laughs) Hey, that rhymed. Well, sort of. Fine. Let's just get down there. We have a job to do. So, uh, do you all get in the elevator? Yes. Sure. Okay. We walk on the elevator, and I switch my privacy hood to night vision. Yes, I do that. As the elevator door closes, the space around you fades to black. As the light of the hall fades to a sliver, and then nothing. The hum of the elevator tells you that you are moving, and you can feel yourselves descending down. Down further than the ground floor on which you arrived. After a short time, the elevator stops. But the doors do not open. I, uh, knock on the elevator door? No response. Linus calls out. Maybe someone on the other side can hear us. No response. Are any of the lights on in the elevator? Not the main lights, but any of the smaller indicator lights? The smaller lights, such as the small blue light over the mark scanner or the display indicator, are still glowing. Reeve! Okay. I stand my mark. 
With the scan of Dr. Fall's mark, the door of the elevator opens into the brightly lit halls of the tower's basement. An officer waits at attention several meters away, holding a data pad. They look upset, disgruntled. I am Officer Hussar. Are you the group sent down by the section director? Please identify yourselves for records check. Yes, I'm Specialist Avio Woolroth. We just came down from the section director's office. Specialist Linus Bauer, here to help. Officer Nona. Dr. R.J. Fall. Where's Dr. Moran? Please, follow me. Sure. Officer Hussar leads you down the maze of pristine halls to a strong, thick metal door, a common entrance to cell blocks. Unlike the upper levels of this building, this floor seems newly renovated. Any advice on our upcoming discussion? Roll for persuasion. With Dr. Moren, do not give him anything. Any personal information. He has a way of picking you apart. He upset you somehow. Scan your marks at the door. All four will be required to gain access. I will be waiting out here. You are required to deposit all your communications and electronic devices in the lockboxes on the wall beside you before the door is opened. Everything? If it is an electronic device of any kind, yes. Leave it here and lock it up. I have to say, hearing it in the officer's voice instead of Max's really makes the whole experience so much more intense. Yes. I mean, Max, you can have a commanding presence, but hearing a stranger give you orders feels really dire. That is what I like to hear. All right, so, do you do it? Do you leave the devices in the lockboxes? Yes, Nona is not risking the fate of Atreus for something so trivial. I think we can all agree. Hmm. You remove your privacy hoods, data pads, and any other electronic devices and place them in the lockboxes. The boxes hiss as the doors close and seal. What do you want to do now? I stand my mark at the door. Every moment counts. We need to get this done quickly. Sure, you all say that, but who's going to be making all these charisma rolls? <sighs> sure, here we go. The door will close behind you. As you walk through the sturdy doors of the prison sector, they seal behind you. There are only four cells in this small prison sector. Three of them are open and empty perfectly cleaned and pristine. The last cell is secured with physical metal bars, an outdated and primitive form of prisoner containment. Empty. So, rolling for perception on the room. Does anything else look out of place? Abnormal for a prison, or Atreus in general? Nice! Officer Nona has been in many of the prison containment areas beneath Atreus, and this one while appearing standard at first glance, differs from the others in one significant way. It is stripped down to the basics. The only time you've seen a similar cell block was in the fringe, where technology was scarce. But this looks intentional. Cleanly removed mark scanners, freshly installed physical key locks, and not a piece of smart glass to be seen. When they say not to bring in any communications device, they really mean it. This place looks like something straight out of a fringe or scav hut. Without the stench, grime, or ineptitude. It just means Dr. Moran is a substantial threat. What about Dr. Moran? What is he doing? What does he look like? In the one shut cell, through the bars of unpolished metal, you can see a man facing the far wall. Unable to see his face, you notice small features. His blonde beard is starting to grow out. His neck has a scar directly along the spine, healed over well, but still a fresh red. His white shirt and pants, common prisoner garb, blends into the white walls of the cell's interior. The bright, clean look of the cell almost feels inviting, but each of you feel the hair on your neck rise. There is something unsettling here. Dr. Moran breathes so slowly, at first you thought he was not breathing at all. Hello, new visitors. I do not have much here, but I do hope there is something I can help you with. Ah, Reeve! Scrap, Max. That voice filter is intense. 
This one is the pre-recorded section from the module, but his whole voice is stored in here as a filter, too. We'll get to that. <clears throat> section director Tori did say I would get some new visitors. She was not very forthcoming with the details, though. So, how about some introductions? No? <laughs> well, then you'll have to excuse me. I have important matters to attend to. Matters? You are looking at a wall. In a cell. Oh yes, looking and contemplating. Any time I find a time to think is important. You never know what I will come up with, but by the way you walk, heavy steps, thick boots, I would assume you are the soldier of the bunch. <laughs> and speaking so brazenly, you must not be a very well-trained one at that. Hilaria, give me a wisdom save for Nona. What? Really? Scrap, Nona is not built for wisdom. Here we go. <sighs> Officer Nona steps closer to the bars, leaning forward in an attempt to assert a stance of physical dominance that goes unnoticed by Dr. Moran. He still sits, back to all of you. Nona feels insulted and spurred to rash action. Well trained enough to know a traitor when I see one. Hey, Nona, you can let me deal with him. Really, this guy has some messed up views on Atreus and our people. Traitor and all. Rolling for persuasion. Fine. Coward. Not even showing his face. So, now you say that you want to deal with me. But what do you offer as part of the bargain, specialist? We understand that you are very well educated, Dr. Moran. A true achievement and testament to what Atreus has to offer. A pinnacle of our education system. Huh. I am an achievement of Atreus, in spite of the education system, specialist. There is no better system of education than what we have constructed. Oh, I am certain you believe that. It is, after all, the only education system. Well, you have obviously been able to do far more than most to warrant the cell and the precautions, and you must have some inherent value if you have not been executed yet. So... The recent work on a new data heist was sloppy. It didn't take long for them to find out the data was missing, or to read the tracks leading back to your work years ago. But to have left such a mess... Uh, roll in for knowledge, Atreus, or, or would it be computer use? What are you trying to find out? More about Dr. Moran's past works. Uh, how well-structured they were. How precise. You did not look up anything on him aside from a brief conversation with Tori before walking in here. So I will not give you that. If you are looking for info on him, Insight might be a viable option. Reeve. All right, I'm not built for that, but I can certainly try. I will roll for the same, since I am built for that. Dr. Fall is unable to glean any information from the unmoving figure at the back of the cell. But Linus leans in closer, seeing a twitch to the left of Dr. Moran's neck. Subtle, but there. A real bumble of a job. Not even a change to the, uh, digital fingerprint. But because of the investigation of your work from four years ago, we know how clean your codes, your methods, can be. And we know that this is not you. Or it was not you. Someone is using your hard work to do their own deeds. And why not? You, stuck in here, pose no threat to anyone mimicking your hard-earned reputation. Looking to capitalize on your work. Rolling for persuasion. Oh, you see. You have my attention. In a smooth movement, Dr. Moran stands. It only takes two quick strides for him to cross the small cell. <sighs> he stands back from the cell bars, out of reach, and smiles a one-sided grin at Linus. Those in-hood face projections are no joke. I can barely see you back there, Max. I do have to complain that it makes it difficult to see you all. I might have to turn the intensity down. Everything looks fuzzy and blue. It is certainly the right level of creep intensity for this guy. Perfect. And back to it. You can see him now. The face of the man who taunted you, who harmed Atreus, and who seems willing, even eager, to do it again. His eyes are light and calm as he sees you as no threat or worry. Yes. 
That is about what I expected from the sound of you, though I would have thought you were taller. He says, indicating a VO. I am the best invention of great things in small packaging since the invention of the meal canister. I am sure you believe that. Dr. Moren turns his sights back on Linus, the amused half-grin sliding from his face. Even his teeth are shiny and white. Perfect and terrible. So, Specialist, what exactly is it that you are offering? Give us verifiable information that leads to the retrieval of lost Atrian data, which, secondarily, will also help us stop some sloppy second-rate computer enthusiasts from dragging your work through the sewer. Soon enough, my works will be eradicated from the databases, and my accomplishments deleted from history, as I will be from this city. In time, your precious Archon will determine that I am no longer of sufficient use. <laughs> uh, understandable, given how terribly limited her thinking can be. If you are in such a hurry to get eradicated, I am sure that I can happily oblige. Max, how do I hurt this guy? How about you come over here with me, Avio? Do not let this traitor stir you to do something rash. <sighs> Fine. <laughs> Atrians are so predictable. There is far less fun in them than fringers. Ah, oh, I miss the variety. We are wasting time speaking with him. He is the only lead. So, Dr. Moren, you are happy with the inspiration for generations of failed Atrian copyists passing off sloppy, insufficient work as your own? Not a particularly aspirational legacy. Have you seen it? The code? Rolling for a deception check? Perfect! Yes, the new breach. It looks like yours. A little piece of perfect work supporting a rickety attempt at a criminal enterprise. It has been so long since I have seen it. And to think it is being used in such a way. So help us. We are selfish. We have our own goals, yes. But so do you. Who had access to your work? Who could have perverted your perfect structure? Stolen it? The grin returns to Dr. Moren's face, growing up his left side to reveal the shine of teeth. It then descends, and the smile on his face becomes calm, almost forgiving. I used to work in a lab beneath the city. Like all respectable criminal enterprises, it was a large complex, off intranet connection and far from expanded range. Secluded and difficult to reach, easy to secure with disposable fringers. A great place to build something beautiful away from prying eyes. I had plans, so much ambition, so I had to bring in assistance. Many died one way or another. Most were educated enough to assist on tasks, but only one was keen on taking personal action. I had planned to kill him before I ended up here. Just another one of those unchecked boxes. An old lackey of yours. That would make sense. And an underground base. I love the cave sections. Can we trust what he's saying, though? We can roll for it. Insight. You believe Dr. Moran is telling the truth? I think we can. Also, everyone has updated their inactive perception scores to the cloud, right? All right. I forgot to check that before we started. What is his name, your assistant? Seneca. I cannot recall the last name. Something with a J, perhaps? And the lab, where is it? I already told you. With a bored gesture, Dr. Moren points down to the ground, indicating that the lab is even lower than the sub-basement you presently stand within. With that... He rubs at the scar at the back of his neck and sits on the edge of the bed, still facing the bars of his cell, close enough to reach. How do we get there? How far down do we have to go? The tunnels, maybe, but which part? If you must be an Atreus, there is only one place worth being. Central City District. There are tons of old mine shafts and caves under the center of the city. They were abandoned generations ago as the resources depleted. Now... 
If you make it through this, I hope you will be so kind as to return to tell me more. All but her, though. I see no real aptitude for story composition in that. Another wisdom save from Nona, please. <sighs> oh. You rush the bars, falling for his taunt. Tell me what you do. Can I reach him? Yes. He is resting at the edge of the cell's bed, sitting where his feet or head would usually go, and facing the bars. Nona rushes the bars, plunging an arm through the metal and ripping Dr. Moran to his feet. Strength check says... Come on, lucky dice. Strength says I lift him off his feet, dangling him in the air. See? <sighs> no variety. Stop, Nona. Section Director Tori told us about his influence. We need to maintain control. You never had control. Put him down, please. We have a lead. Just leave him here to waste away. We need you on this team, not stuck filling out reprimand forms for the harassment of an imprisoned traitor. And persuasion roll says... Wither away here, Doctor. Atreus needs nothing from you. And Nona drops him back to the floor, removing her arm from the cell. Dr. Moran lands and stumbles back briefly, returning to a seated position on the bed. He uses his hands to flatten down the creases Nona's fist left in his shirt. Then, he smiles at Linus. Safe travels. Nona, still upset, bangs on the heavy metal door four times. We have no time to waste. The massive doors open, and outside stands Officer Hassan. One more thing, Dr. Moran. What do you believe Seneca will do with the schematics? That poor child? I would not think him more than a meal chaser. Granted, he may not be the problem. Now, what happens when the schematics reach someone else's hands? Hmm? Fringer hands? That would be a problem. Those atmospheric regulators are fine pieces of technology, capable of far, far more, given the right adjustments. How did you know it was Atmo Regs? We never told you that. I know. <laughs> now hurry, every moment matters. Can you pass the caffeine? So, what do you do? Leave. But it also means we have a better lead. We leave and collect our things. We will need to catch a Skyrail to the Central District, and can call Section Director Tori on the way to get authorization to subterranean access. Nona is not built for the decision-making. She will go where the others choose, and hopes a little bit that she will get to see some violence. The dice have been favorable so far, but I aim not to push it. Linus leaves while he is still ahead. I hope you were able to gain something of use. Dr. Moran was only moved here temporarily, but at this point, we may hold him here until the end of your investigation. May the Archon watch over you. Officer Hussar gestures you out. The team leaves the cells and collects their items from the lockboxes. Officer Hussar escorts the team back to the elevator. The Sky Rail Station is accessible from the 12th floor walkway to the neighboring tower. We go to floor 12, again, wasting no time. Someone should call Tori. I call Tori. SD Tori. Section Director, this is Specialist Woolruth. We just left the cell of Dr. Moran and we have a new lead on the data heist. We will need authorization and clearance for the subsidy access in the Central District. An assistant of Dr. Moran's, first name Seneca, could be the perpetrator of the heist. He is using an off-connection facility beneath the Central City to store the data until a trade can be made. Your team will have access upon arrival, but be cautious. There is another DRD advanced technology team in the mines beneath the Central City. For minerals, I think. They do not know about the heist and will attempt to halt your progress when they identify you as DRD. Interdepartmental feuding is worse than ever this year. But remember not to harm them, no matter how much we may want to. I like this, Tori. I have meetings regarding this case and another the rest of the day. Send text updates, and find me those schematics. May the Archon watch over you. You as well, Section Director. DRD ATD teams will try to stop us? It was all about that funding. Tough competition led to so much infighting and sabotage. 
unless you have anything specific you want your characters to do during the travel time, I can forward us to the Central District Subcity access point. Any objections? Can we have two additional cave mining packs from the supplies list? I can assume the packs are picked up from the tower before your departure to the Skyrail stations. Anything else? Great. Right then. As your team walks up to the massive metal base of the Skyrail support, you easily spot the slanted, descending door pressed into the concrete. A guard in full DRD ATD gear is standing at the sealed door. You all stand back here for a bit. I can talk our way past this guard. I could just go and knock them out. (laughs) In fact, I really want to do that. Wait, we need to aim for a low-profile approach for as long as possible. I would like to roll to convince you otherwise. Wait, where did my dice go? Can you check under your chairs? I just had them. Anything? No. No, sorry. They're in this apartment somewhere. They probably just rolled under the couch or something. Fine. Just do what Blandis had planned. So, Linus approaches the guard. Yes, I walk up, tall, professional. Nice to know the guard rotation is working. Being stuck down there, you forget what time it is. We will head back down and leave you to your work. And give me that deception roll. Please? I know every member of this team by now, and you are none of them. So turn around and head back to whatever out-of-central theater you walked out of. Excuse me? Stay calm. Get us in there. Or I will knock this guard out! We are all on the same team. I may not be on your, well, actual team, but we all want what is prosperous for Atreus. An upstanding citizen like yourself will understand that, certainly. Persuasion roll. Officer Tacoma laughs and stands in the way of the door. The standard-issue rifle looks intimidating enough, but more so when accompanied by a stern stare. (laughs) If you think I am such an upstanding citizen, then maybe I deserve a bonus. Some extra meal for all the trouble you are putting me through? Yeah, sure. A bribe. I could do a bribe. How does a four-meal sound? Sounds like you should turn around and leave. Can I please knock the guard out now? (laughs) Again. Try not to be so hasty about harming a fellow citizen. (sighs) Okay, would 15 meal be enough? Uh, Sure. Go on through, sir. (sighs) Finally. The mark scanner to the right is an older model. Something uncommon, but not unseen in the shining central district. A maintenance shaft entrance like this would not need to meet the ever-evolving aesthetic standards of the bustling city center. As Linus scans his mark, the door opens. He walks in. As the others approach, the guard stops them. Fifteen just covers him. Each of you needs to pay up, too. If I delay in reporting back, well, my team will get suspicious. Are you serious? Uh, fine. Fifteen, here. That was most of my stock. Uh, It's all I have, too. Here, fifteen. I have some more. We can share what is left. Officer Tacoma gives you the side eye and smiles at the pile of meal left on the ground. A sizable bonus for the day, indeed. As you all descend into the sub-city access, the yellowed lights of the tunnels take over, leaving the bright lights of Atreus dimming, and then gone as the door shuts behind you. Oh, hey, I need to get this call. It's Rufus. Go talk. We can break here. This works out. We need to study anyways. I have two pages worth of confusion on chapter seven to discuss. Can you help me look for my dice first? They could not have gotten far. I'll help. Let me just save our progress. That was so many awful rolls. We just gave the guard 60 meal. Ugh. Sorry, team. Where are they? They should not have rolled for so long. Thank you for listening to the Liberty Podcast. If you would like early access to episodes and bonus content, join fellow citizens on our Fool and Scholar Patreon at patreon.com slash fool and scholar. 
This episode of Tales from the Tower was written by K.A. Stats, co-created and produced with sound design by Travis Vendroff, with dialogue editing and additional sound design by Marissa Ewing. Minds and Mysteries stars Frankie Larson, Travis Vendroff, Cole Burkhart, Christy Luce, Jordan Cobb, and Peter Lewis. Minds and Mysteries features additional voices by K.A. Stats, Naomi McMillan, Lindsay Graham, Aethor Featherson, Ryan Philbrook, Graham Royd, Lindsay Zana, and Daniel Demerin. The music for this season of Tales from the Tower was written by Brandon Boone, and episodes were mixed by Marissa Ewing of Hemlock Creek Productions. This production is copyrighted 2021 by Fool and Scholar Productions, and Liberty is a trademark of Travis Vengrove. Thank you for listening. Hope that the Archon watches over you.